Hey, I'm Maggie Fuller. I'm a freshman business student here at the University of Arkansas. And today I'm at Crystal Bridges Museum in Benville, Arkansas to talk about the George Washington Constable Hamilton portrait by Gilbert Stewart. Let's go inside. Gilbert Stewart was born in Saunderstown, Rhode Island in 1775, but moved to Newport when he was seven. This was where he met his mentor, Cosmo Alexander. Looking to finish his studies, Stewart moved with Alexander to Scotland in 1771, but returned to Newport in 1773 after attempting and failing to make a living as a painter. The start of the American Revolution ironically put Stewart's dreams of portrait painting at risk, so he left for England in 1775 where he studied under Benjamin West for the next six years. After falling into much debt, Stewart returned to the United States in 1793 and finally settled in Germantown, Pennsylvania in 1795. This is where he painted many famous American revolutionists, including George Washington. While there are certainly more famous works of Gilbert Stewart than George Washington, the Constable Hamilton portrait, each of Stewart's works are quite well known and highly regarded. Unfortunately, Stewart became partially paralyzed as a result from a stroke in 1824 and later died in 1828. The artwork that I will be discussing today was painted by Stewart in 1797 and is known by the name George Washington, the Constable Hamilton portrait. This portrait contains nationalistic value. Painting on a canvas with oil, Stewart portrayed Washington in a vertical plane with him sitting in a chair while holding a document and sword, both slanted upward. Behind Washington, the viewer can see a column with red drapery above it. In the far distance, a boat can be seen in a body of water. While this portrait is asymmetrical, there is still a sense of visual satisfaction felt by the viewer. The naturalistic look in this portrait is not to be overlooked. It is almost as realistic as a photograph, yet still contains elements that were obviously not present while Stewart was painting, for example, the boat in the background. The methodology that this portrait would best fit under would be iconography. The underlying text of this portrait would be George Washington's part in the American Revolutionary War. Stewart uses many subtle elements within his portrait to depict this information. First, Washington is seen sitting in a chair with a sword in his lap, an obvious reference to his duties as a war hero. Near the sword, Washington is seen holding what looks like an important document. This document is most likely the Declaration of Independence due to the painting being finished nearly 20 years after the Declaration was signed. Perhaps the most intriguing element of this portrait, however, is the scenery in the background. Behind the column and drapery, many boats can be seen in a vast body of water. The coloring behind the primary boat seems to be orange, most likely representing an explosion of some kind. Stewart also portrays the sky as being dark and gloomy with many clouds, an obvious reference to the darkness and misery many experienced during the dark times of the American Revolution. As mentioned earlier, Stewart began his career abroad to study under well-known and respected artist Benjamin West. It is no surprise that Stewart is one of the most well-known artists of the American Revolution, since his mentor was also famous for his portraits of historical figures. During his 18 years abroad, six of which were spent under West, Stewart's artworks ultimately fell under the realism category of 18th century art. Gilbert Stewart does an incredible job in bringing his portrait to life. Non-realism painters would not pay much attention to the rosiness of Washington's cheeks, nor the folding of the document in Washington's hand. The way the paper falls and the rosiness of Washington's cheeks are details only realism artists can master. Stewart's portrait was most definitely influenced by the artwork of painters in the English realism movement of the 18th century, more specifically his mentor, Benjamin West. Work by West, along with other artists, played an immense role in forming the artists who later would be considered the most influential artists of the American Revolution. I have always been interested in the American Revolution. When I went to Crystal Bridges for the first time, I went crazy over this piece. It was so cool to personally see artwork that I had only seen in history books for so long. I chose to research this portrait because I knew nothing about the painter. After researching Gilbert Stewart's life, I realized I loved this portrait more than I ever did before. I love the simplicity of the painting the most. George Washington is not in his war hero attire, nor is he standing on a battlefield with chaos behind him. He is simply sitting in a chair with a document in his hands and a sword in his lap. In fact, despite his deserving to boast about his accomplishments, George Washington seems quite humble in his mannerisms and body language. That is why I chose and love this portrait, because even though Washington had every reason to boast, and even though Stuart had the talent to paint far more elaborate paintings, both men remained humble and simple, and that is how the world will remember them.